Now for this video, you may want to follow along at home or at work or wherever you are, preferably not when you're driving because that can be very dangerous, especially when you're dealing with a rifle. Even more so if you're dealing with maybe a 16 to a 20 inch rifle, because as you're driving, trying to wield a, a like a full length rifle, that's just, that's just silly. So yeah. Hey, Matt Lanfer here with Primary and Secondary. This is going to be another one of those real short videos, it's going to go right to the point. It's going to be just covering a little tiny as aspect dealing with a rifle. So basically, I'm just going to be talking about hand placement because our hand placement actually is going to be affecting our overall performance with our rifle. So the first aspect is basically going to be talking about your, your shooting hand, your, your primary hand, whatever you want to call it. For me, it's my right hand. This hand does not leave the gun unless I'm doing some kind of a malfunction drill or, or something like that or malfunction reduction. This hand is the one that's going to be pressing the trigger, uh, changing from safe to fire, maybe even to auto depending on the weapon. Might also be able to drop the magazine. Now obviously with all of this, this is dependent on your physical body, your, your hand size, your overall strength, even to some extent your dexterity. So there are exceptions. First thing you want to do though is grab as high as you can on the weapon. Essentially what this is doing is this is helping you maintain better positive control of controls. Um, as a matter of fact, I, I am a big fan of keeping my thumb above the selector at all times. Essentially what this does is it allows me to manipulate it in a moment's notice. Keeping it down here kind of wastes a little bit of time. It's less effective. Sure, that doesn't take much time to do that. Go from underneath the selector way down here to selector, but why do I want to waste any time, especially if we're dealing with deadly force? There are other schools of thought where you keep your thumb under the selector. What this does is this provides positive control also on the selector. This makes sure that the selector does not go off safe unless you want it to. This is a pretty solid, pretty solid uh, concept. But for me, I do prefer above. This also provides my positive control. Additionally, my index finger is able to reach the mag, the mag button. I can drop a mag as necessary. Um, but really keeping my hand as high as possible is rather recommended. It's also going to help with my overall stability. Next up is my support hand. What I like to do is I like to keep my hand out as far as possible within reason. I'm not going to be holding on up here. That's kind of silly, especially because that's a suppressor and that kind of gets hot. But what I like to do is bring my hand out beyond the, re beyond the receiver. There are a couple of reasons. Uh, a few years ago, uh, it was actually 10 years ago, I taught a rifle class where a SWAT operator, an experienced SWAT operator, was using a magwell grip. And he was shooting the gun kind of like this. Well, as he was shooting, Somehow he was inducing malfunctions. Who knows why? That's right. Thank you for raising your hand. By putting his hands over the ejection port, even if it's open, you're potentially getting some malfunctions there. Personally, I like it a little higher, a little further from that magazine, uh, from the receiver. There's a greater benefit from this as well. Think about a tripod. If you have a tripod and you have all three legs very close together, what kind of stability do you have? That's basically what you have with a one point of contact here at your shoulder, another point of contact here, and then another point of contact here. I have a very, very tiny tripod going on. However, if I, if I extend one of those legs out further, I just gained a whole lot more stability. So bringing that arm out brings out the legs of the tripod. One last thing is concerning over travel with moving laterally, going target to target. Now this is, the, this is the part where you want to try this at home. Preferably have your weapon unloaded because that's what you're supposed to do. And find yourself in some area where you're not going to be pointing your gun at anyone or anything you want to destroy because that's kind of one of those firearms rules. What you want to do is figure out what points that you want to aim at have some decent, have at least 10 feet between them, and do a magwell grip. And go on target, 
and then transition to next target and watch how far your dot over travels or even your front iron sight with that magwell grip. Now do the exact same drill. Bring your hand out further, be on target, transition to the next target and watch how much over travel you have. I suspect you're going to find less over travel. I suspect you're going to stop closer to the mark with your hand further out versus doing a magwell. That's what I found. There's a possibility I'm completely wrong. As a matter of fact, I don't deny that. Again, there are exceptions. This is what I've found. So that's all. Very basic, very quick. Make sure you hit like, subscribe, share. And those aren't just words I say, those are words I mean. You can find us at primaryandsecondary.com. We also are on patreon.com slash primaryandsecondary. You can help support the whole network there. There are a lot of benefits for members. So that's it. I will talk to you soon. Uh-huh. Uh-huh.